All right, 33 points right there for uh, Jalen Brown as the Celtics get the win, 129 to 102. Their 56th win of the season. Some significance there. We can talk about that later. We got Eddie House, Chris Forsberg with us, Drew and Scal in Detroit. And uh, guys, I'll start with you in Detroit. Uh, it's just, it feels like it doesn't matter who's out of the lineup. And Drew likes to ask a question before every game like, who's going to step up? It, it, someone always does. Someone always does, Drew. <laughs> yeah, and again, Giles, just like you're stepping up in the studio with Amina not there anymore as uh, Peyton Pritchard steps up, Luke Cornett, of course, steps up. And Peyton Pritchard, you know, he didn't do a whole lot in the second half compared to the first half, but I, I think the second quarter Wednesday against Milwaukee and then the first half tonight, I mean, you see just how good he can be. And again, it's, it, it's for a team where He's almost a luxury. I mean, they're yeah. so loaded. You know, what's interesting is, like, sometimes you have a team and there are some guys that are playing above their heads, right? They're just like, man, this guy's having a career year. I don't know if this guy can sustain it. Maybe he can't do it next year. It's almost as we're watching and you start to see guys out, it's actually like maybe guys are actually sacrificing and maybe we're thinking they're having sort of career years, but actually they're capable of so much more. And I – I kind of think that about our bench. They don't get the credit when people talk about, all oh, this bench is not, it's not good enough. How are they going to win in the playoffs? You think about guys like Derek White or Drew Holiday. You know, we, we know we have our superstar players and what they give you, and, and maybe even you could say Jason Tatum and, and Jalen Brown could probably do more too. But, you know, everybody on this team seems to be sacrificing and everyone is loving the opportunity to have a night where they get to play more, shoot more, or just be involved in the action a lot more. Who was that guy who came up to you in the elite media dining room here in Detroit and said, I don't know about your guys in the playoffs. I don't think they're deep enough. Who was that? <laughs> you don't not, have to put them on blast. I, <laughs> but, but I'm not going to do that. Guys, that's a common narrative, and I just think it's flat wrong. I think you're not paying attention if you think the Celtics aren't deep. I mean, look at the way – Luke Cornett has improved the way Peyton Pritchard has clearly improved. The guy was asking for trades last year, and now he's one of their most important contributors off the bench. Sam Hauser, we know what he's doing. So, And then Al Horford usually comes off the bench. So if you think the Celtics don't have a deep bench, you're crazy. Yeah, Eddie, what did you think of the role players, the, the depth guys, and the way they stepped up tonight? I, I think about it like this. Let's, uh, let's put it all in a nutshell, right? When Derek White first came to the team, everybody was like, okay, D. White, he's a good player, but – you know, is he that guy that's going to help them get to the promised land, right, to get over the hump? And it's all about getting comfortable. You know, if you are a player and you know where your minutes are and you know what you could bring, and you got to give Brad Stevens a ton of credit for picking the right guys, for knowing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get winning players, number one. I'm going to get guys that can be selfish, selfless, but at the same time, affect winning in many different ways and i think that's what we're seeing from our bench yeah they're not big big name players they're not you know they're not the guys that are going to jump off the page when you say their names and people think like oh these guys are automatically going to help this team be better no but if you watch the celtics play these are the guys that are going to help them win a championship the peyton pritchers the luke cornets the sam hausers the Derek whites the drew holidays i know drew holiday already won a championship but the fact of the matter these are all winning players that love to play the game of basketball. These are all hoopers, hoopers. The Celtics are treating some of these back-to-backs like split squad spring training games. They're sending three starters to Jupiter, <laughs> three starters down to, 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 to the floor. Like, it's amazing to me. If you think this team isn't deep and you're watching like the way they're treating the rest of, 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 of the, the starters on this team and making sure that everybody's upright for the playoffs, you are truly not paying attention. But, Drew, I threw it at scale the other night. I, with, like, with, I, so I'll, I'll try to phrase it differently. Like, which of these bench guys is going to be most vital when the playoffs roll around? Like, does Sam need to get, like, be the guy knocking down shots? Does Luke have to give you that extra big off the bench? Which guy is yeah. most vital? Besides give that. Give me – yeah, no, like – and we're all – none of us are mentioning Xavier Tillman as well. Who started seems, tonight. Yeah, like, I think Luke – I think I think Joe Mazzullo is trying to incorporate him. Give me the game. Give me the series. Give mm. me the situation. Give me who's in, who's out. Do we, do we have two days off? Or like, There's a lot of variables into who's going to be the guy or who's going to. And I think if you look at it, Peyton Pritchard and the way that he created energy in that Milwaukee game, man, if he goes out there in a playoff game, instead of playing three to four minutes in a stint, maybe he goes six to seven minutes in that stint. So, you know, I think the biggest problem moving forward after all this as we go through this whole thing would be 
I think everybody in the NBA, and Eddie included, me included, like you always want to maximize your role. And I think the Celtics have a really good problem. The really good problem is they got a lot of good players that deserve to play. And they're figuring it out right now. But, man, these guys are showing a tremendous amount of success when they get their individual opportunities. And what does that lead to in the future? But this is not a problem for us this year as we, head, or as we get closer to the playoffs. All right, we'll see what it looks like again tomorrow night. Is uh, I would assume that you're going to have a, a totally different-looking uh, starting lineup, as always. Uh, let's catch up with Abby, meanwhile. Jalen, what kind of rhythm did you find here on the floor? You were perfect from two. The only shots you missed were from three. Uh, just trying to be aggressive. Uh, coming out, we know we got some players out. Uh, just try to find our teammates. Uh, I ended up with no assist tonight. I thought I made some good passes, but outside of that, I was just being aggressive. Yeah, missing two starters. When Jason doesn't play, you're averaging over 32 points a game. How does the approach change? Because I know you're always aggressive to start. Yeah, just keep being aggressive, but playing a little bit faster. Um, and just trying to get into a rhythm um, from on defense and offense and let the game kind of take care of itself. Here in Detroit, P. Rabbit came out in that starting lineup. What does it do for you guys when he is that aggressive? Yeah, P. came out on fire. Like, in the first half, I was like, it's his show. Uh, let him keep running it. He was playing well, making the right play. So when we got our guys rolling like that, that's important. So uh, we want to empower our guys to continue to play like that and reward them. So, you know, in the next couple games, um, be looking to play through with some of our guys to get them feeling good about themselves. Yeah, pretty good start to this season-long trip. How are you challenging this team on this road trip? More as a, a battle of focus, battle of mindset. We could have came out and went through the motions, allowed Detroit to get comfortable. Uh, but we came out and we executed. You know, we didn't play around. Even we're down a couple players, still came out and took care of business. So that's the most important thing. Jalen, thank you. Congrats. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, Abby. 129-102, the final score. Celtics getting the victory in Detroit. Game one of six here on the road. We're going to take a quick break. More Celtics post-game live comes your way after this.